Joe Rogan is moving his content to Spotify. What a wonderful opportunity to analyze Joe Rogan's podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, and its cultural impact and meaning. The basic deal is going to be like, as you already know, because you're the kind of person who's into this stuff, 100 million quid to go on to Spotify. Um, it will still be free if you've got Spotify, but Spotify will be providing viewers to their advertisers. Now, obviously, my podcast is on Luminary. Some time ago, we sold our podcast under the skin to a platform, and I always felt a bit dodgy about it, you know, because, uh, well, because for the internet space, you're used to getting for nothing. But YouTube, where you're probably watching this now, uh, obviously, you know, sells advertising. And Instagram, if you're watching it there, you're being corralled and marketed to. In a sense, as long as we all live under the economic auspices of capitalism, then those are the rules of the game, unless you want to set up exempted and parallel universes. Now, like, I reckon Joe Rogan moving to Spotify is significant. I reckon it's a game changer. I always fought for online subscription model podcast platforms to work. They needed to get Joe Rogan or someone comparable. And there isn't really anyone comparable, maybe Mark Maron, but not really anymore. Rogan's a sort of a unique thing. It's going to be weird that his stuff won't be on YouTube anymore, and apparently I got from that, was it called Valuetainment? A very good channel, very interesting, Valuetainment. They said, like, you know, there's gonna, Spotify are gonna have a, set up a video arm just to deal with it. In terms of the economics of it, they're saying that Rogan got 100 million quid, but that the share prices of Spotify stock jumped up to equivalent of 5 billion in value which I suppose is five billion in value. There's no equivalent, is there? But only in Marshmallow. <laughs> but, but only in Pixie Dream. Um, five billion worth of Pixie Dreams. It's weird, isn't it? Because, of course, you know, your stock prices could go down as well as up. But it's interesting. It is definitely a value, clearly, to Joe Rogan. I've often thought about what that is. I've been a guest on this show several times, and I'm in, I, I think it would be, I consider him a friend. I consider him a friend. You don't want to put yourself out, do you? Don't be all vulnerable. That guy. Anyway, yeah, I've got his phone number. I'm wondering what, <laughs> what do you need to know about this? I think he's an interesting cultural figure because I think a lot of what he's doing is men's wellness and men's spirituality. I think it's interesting when there's been controversies around Joe Rogan, like when he endorsed Bernie Sanders and the left didn't want that endorsement or parts of the left. That, for me, showed that an interesting moment in the evolution of politics and somewhat the end of conventional left-right liberal... Uh, conservative, right-wing, left-wing understanding of politics. Rogan, like he has people on there that are the scourge of liberalism, you know, but, but people I think whose voices you want to see in conversation. I'm well up for talking to people with different, um, you know, viewpoints from me. And, and Rogan himself has always said he's voted Democrat his whole life. So, you know, what, what, what is that? But what I think is significant about him is like with his connections to UFC and uh, his interest in hunting and all that kind of stuff and wellness and supplements, he kind of represents an aspect of men's health that <laughs> men's health is necessarily sort, not necessarily, usually about physical stuff, isn't it? Like, you know, being fit, doing weights, cycling, hunting, like stuff to do with the body. But because he's of his interest in psychedelics, he's sort of in uh, the, at least the consciousness aspects, and you could argue the spiritual aspect of wellness by virtue of that. He said before, like, that he would never call himself an atheist because, like, um, you know, what, what do we know? And anyone who takes psychedelics, it just opens up a lot of questions. I think he's an important cultural figure and an important cultural commentator. And anyone who is the person that takes a medium to a new level, you have to see what that represents, what that means. For example, an obvious example would be Howard Stern. Howard Stern is a person who moved the medium forward, changed the way a medium is regarded. Joe Rogan has done a comparable thing. So what I think is, is he addressed a long neglected aspect of masculinity. I think he's moving the conversation forward as new uh, milieus and new taxonomies emerge around politics and thinking and philosophy. I think he appeals a lot to blue collar people who are intellectually inclined and intellectually interested. And I think a lot of his workers um, 
countenance denied, undermined the idea that people were, oh, people just like five second little bites of information. People can't think, people got no concentration. Like if you listen to these, like some of the episodes he's done on Egyptology or chemistry, biochemistry, politics, uh, the AI, you know, he goes deep, you know, three hour conversations with people in an accessible way. I'm very interested in people that are able to make esoteric information exoteric and accessible. So I think this is a significant, it's obvious, you know, it doesn't matter what, I think it's a significant cultural shift this moment. I think it's good for anyone that's a content provider, particularly at a time when people are talking about YouTube, censorship and what can be said online, particularly as these new emergent spaces become increasingly commodified. You know, there's always a wild west moment when new technologies emerge and even, uh, you know, even at this point you can regard the internet as a somewhat of a new technology. But what my personal belief is, is that the underlying economic forces, which ultimately means forces full stop, the dominant powers of our time, corral and control those spaces. I don't think it will make any difference to the output or the content of Joe Rogan's stuff. I think he'll be a person that continues to do what he wants to do. I think he's in a pretty much an unassailable position. But what I suppose it shows us is that uh, corporate power is dominating the online space the way it dominates everything. So I suppose, um, yeah, what I would take from it is that uh, it's a fascinating move. It's good if you're a content provider. It's probably good if you're Joe, you know, Joe Rogan will carry on. All you're doing is downloading an app, you know. So it's, it's change, but it's an interesting change. And I reckon that it will create opportunities. But my concern is that there'll be mostly economic opportunities. But if ever there was a time for the world to change and for new paradigms to emerge, it's this one. And really, as I've said, I'm very very close to Joe Rogan, so I just hope he succeeds.